Hey, what's up? Welcome. You are listening to TC the G Radio Season 3, Episode 9. I am TC the G, broadcasting directly from Tijuana, Baja California. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to have a great time. The title of today's episode, Santeria. Okay, I decided to speak on Santeria today because, you know, with the new baby and, you know, people come up to you with consejos, right? They want to give you their, um, they want to give you pieces of advice, right? And I completely appreciate that. I totally appreciate that. Some people, you know, they want to pass on their wisdom, but I have noticed that some people do it out of um, their ego, I guess. They want to feel like they know more or they want to feel like they know better, which again, I don't want to take from some people, you know, they do have the experience. They do have the time, you know, the experience. They have put in the work, the time to raise their kids. And yes, most definitely they have some pearls of wisdom to share with us, right? Now, I can tell the difference between somebody who's doing it out of ego versus somebody who's doing it out of their heart because the ego person usually is like telling you what to do, like their tone of voice. Um, They're not really like, oh, you know, did you know that, you know, or this helped me as a parent or... It's usually like, ay, los calcetines, ay, like, you know, the whole, the whole extra emphasis on what they're saying, right? And I, I myself, I really don't care, like, um, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, too sensitive or anything. I, I let them say whatever they want to say. Of course, at the end of the day, it's up to me what information or what, um, advice I'm going to take and utilize in my parenting, right? So it does get a little bit annoying. I'm not going to lie when people are constantly, constantly telling you things um, or they think, you know, they're helping maybe. It does get a little like, it gets a little bit like uh, repetitive. I guess, I guess, I guess a little bit like annoying. It's just like, uh, but you know, I just let people be, if they really bother me, I would say it, you know, like, ah, uh, like, señora, es, es, no, no se preocupe, you know, es mi hijo, es mi hija, no se preocupe, todo está bien, um, and sometimes, you know, I, I have used that, and they kind of understand que, like, uh, I really don't want to hear, you know, like, and it's usually, like, things that they fear, like, they're speaking out of their own fear, right, um, like, for example, if I take my daughter to the store and she's not wearing socks, even though it's not like cold weather or raining or, oh, where are her socks? And it's like, why does she need socks? You know, it's, it's like middle of the day. We're going to the store quickly. What does she need those socks for? If anything, like I have noticed that when we over protect our children, we make them weaker. Even their immune system becomes weaker because we're so protective of them that we're not allowing them to experience the world and you know just like they're overprotected you know for example also when they're like on the floor or they eat dirt or things like that some parents oh don't 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 do that don't eat dirt of course i'm not gonna let my daughter eat a pound of dirt you know what i mean but if she wants if she's like if I see that she ate a little bit of dirt or that she's playing with dirt, I'm not going to take her away and kind of like, you know, be mad at that because that's part of being human. That's part of childhood, right? You, you have to experience the world and all these, you know, we might think all dirt is dirty, but it also has like, bacteria that we need as people to to be healthy right because if you're like in a place where everything is so sanitized as soon as a little virus comes in you're gonna be you're you're pretty much not gonna have the the defense mechanism to take care or to kill off this virus right it's just it's just science 
So those are the little things like, you know, if it was like, if the advice was delivered in a different way or, um, and yes, in a different way, in a different manner, in a different tone, maybe it would be received, you know, more graciously. For example, there was this girl in the park. Uh, she had her son. She she was she had him in the stroller, right? And that day it was beaming, beaming, beaming hot. She was on the phone. She had her child in the stroller, but she was going like towards the sun. So like the baby was like really hot, and she was going around the park. So the baby was like you know, you can say kind of like heating. You know what I mean? So or overheating. So she was going around the park and I was walking with my husband and I told him, you know, when we come around, I'm going to let her know, you know, that or approach her in this way, right? Oh, hey, let me help you or approach her in a different way. I, t I told my husband, I'm going to approach her, but you know, I'm going to do it. Like I said, uh, like I said, in a gracious way, right? In a gracious manner, like, hey, um, I think your baby is, it's kind of, I think the baby's hot. You might want to, you know, like put the, the, the blanket over, over, over the stroller so it can give him some shade or, hey, uh, I don't mean to bother you or, or anything, you know, let me help you with, with the blanket because it looks like the baby is, it's cold, it's hot. Or something like that, you know? Not like, hey, the baby's hot. You should need to put the blanket on the baby. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a difference, you know? There's a big difference. And again, those people that go about it that way, I'm pretty sure they're just, um, maybe they don't know how to approach things properly. Maybe, you know? So I, I can expect everybody to know how to approach things. It just gets a little, like, after a while, it just gets a little like, ah, uh, people need to kind of like mind their own business if they're not going to go about it the right way. You know what I mean? Of course, if the child was in danger, hey, say in whatever way you want. That's no issue. But if it's just like the socks or if it's just like, oh, the blanket, you know, you didn't bring a blanket, even though, again, it's hot. It's like, or it's not super cold, you know, like. A lot of um, Mexican women, they're like blanket. Here in Tijuana, I, I've experienced a lot of them. Oh, the blanket for everything, even though it's not like, even though it's not like um, hot, cold or anything. I have met one lady. Um, she actually, she's she's so when I see her, she's always like, oh, it's so it's so cool that that you don't have your baby all like abrigada like like a lot of people do. You let her experience like the elements, you know. Like, you just letting her be like, you know, in the elements, kind of like, like us. And I told her, yes, you know, I, if it was cold, I will definitely put another blanket. Like, I'm not stupid, you know, I know what cold is. And I know that babies, you know, have, they can't regulate their temperature as much as we can as older, older humans. But overall, if the weather is not really that cold, like, you know, I don't want to overprotect her and then again, have her defense mechanisms not work because I'm overprotecting her. You know what I mean? But anyways, this kind of goes back to the whole santeria, okay? Because I've also had a woman tell me, my daughter had hiccups one day, and she said, put a red thread on on the middle of her, of her um, forehead, and that will make it go away, okay? And I was like, I know I've heard that, that remedy before, and I just started studying, like, people, these kind of rituals, these kind of things, like the red thread and things like that, that's santeria. You're believing that this thread is going to take care of that hiccup. You know what I mean? You're putting your faith in something outside. Uh, you're putting your faith on something that is not God, on this thread, you know? Another example is I went to the OXO the other day and when the baby, when, not the other day, actually, I'm sorry, I'm lying. I went to the OXO like when she was really, really small, like almost like maybe like a month old. And the lady said, oh, you should get her one of the, one of those red bracelets para que no le hagan el, el mal, el ojo, no le, no le hagan ojo. 
And I was like, I told her straight out, I was like, oh, yo no creo en eso, you know, yo pongo toda, yo, yo no creo en eso, yo pongo toda mi fe en, en, en Dios. And she's like, oh, you don't believe in that? No crees en eso? And I was like, no, no, no creo que la gente tenga ese tipo de poder sobre, sobre mi hija. If anything, I'm praying over my daughter every day, you know, and that's, that's protection, if anything. So... It's like, a, it's like a funny thing to think that a bracelet is going to protect your child from like ne negative energy. You know, the only one that can protect your child from negative energies or just from, you know, bad things in the world is the Most High. He's the only one that has this kind of power. Not a bracelet. You know, to me, it's just it kind of baffles my mind sometimes. Like, you guys are putting your faith in this bracelet? Like, a bracelet. That's what your faith is, you know? Another one that's an example of that, well, I guess those little bracelets, actually, they have like a little eye. Y en español es el ojo, el ojo turco o el ojo de la suerte. And of course, in English, is the evil eye, right? And it's like an eye, and it has like blue, sometimes it's red. And I've seen sometimes that it can also be green, but the most common ones that I have seen are the red one and the blue one. Okay, before I saw the blues, I actually seen the red. I've, I had seen the red before. Like, that was the first one, one that I ever saw, ever, ever, ever. And then when I got, when I got here to Tijuana, I started seeing the blue one. Um, and they have them a lot in the, in the witchcraft stores here in Tijuana or, like, Santeria stores. They call them, like, um, botanicas, you know? But it's, if you go in there, it's, like, They have a lot of like figure, like uh, monos or like figure figurines or like um, santos and like they even have like devils. They have like gnomes, all those type of things that they worship instead of worshiping the Most High, right? They're putting their they're putting their faith in these santos to help them instead of putting it in the most high. And you know, everybody has the right to live their life the way, the way they want to. But to me, that to me is just, um, it's like you're having a middleman. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to a middleman. There's no reason for a middleman. The main guy is the main guy. So why are you take you, why are you talking to them to a middleman? And, And again, I guess everybody has the right to, you know, do whatever they want, worship whoever they want, as long as they're not, you know, as long as they're not hurting people or kids. But at the end of the day, these type of like santeria, those are rituals. A lot of them are rituals to manipulate your life around, the life around you, right? And I think the best way to manipulate your life is doing the proper action. If you want your life to be good, then you need to do good actions. It's not going to be this mono. It's not going to be San Judas. It's not going to be El Malverde. It's not going to be La Santa Muerte, the one, that, the one that's going to come help you. You know, it's going to be your actions. Your actions are going to be the ones to forge your future. And I'm not saying that I don't believe that there's some supernatural forces, you know, most definitely. But Santeria, I don't put that together with good forces. I put that with forces that, dark forces, let's put it that way. Dark energy, dark forces. Because again, you're trying to control, a lot of them do like spells, to get like a loved one or like spells for this spells for that and it's like that you're just trying to control people you know you're trying to control people and you need to ha let people have their free will and at the same time I feel kind of sad for those people because they're fearful of life or they're they're so scared that they have to go to that extent of trying to like control people in situations instead of realizing that the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is within 
you know it's in you it's up to you to forge the life that you want now it does take a lot of you know emotional maturity it takes a lot of work so I completely understand how some people might just want to take a shortcut in that way you know and just do a spell and think that that everything's gonna be taken care of the same way like those stones you know like um how people like get stones and supposedly this stone this stone is for this this stone is for that like like uh quartz and things like that and i used to be a lot into that before when i was like more into like um hip like more my hippie stuff but as time progressed i just like started thinking like not thinking i got that insight right from the most high that these rocks yes they have properties yes everything in the world is alive has a spirit but i am the one in charge of my destiny of my future it's not gonna be this rock it's not gonna be this prayer it's not gonna be this santo it's gonna be up to me i it's up to me that's why i have free will so this idea so these ideas of doing like these kind of rituals like the the thread on your forehead or the bracelet and things like that i just i just think it's like you know witchcraft you know and i don't mean to like when people talk about it i know it's like embedded in their traditions embedded in how they were raised so it's kind of hard for them to understand maybe my point of view that the most high is the most high that's the only one we need that's the only guy i pray to not a bracelet not a eye not a little figurine and i guess my faith is that strong and maybe their faith is not as strong again so they think they need to take these measures and i guess yeah i guess that makes sense you know like their faith is not that strong in the most high that they feel like they have to add these extra things into the equation I know for myself when I was into those little like stones and things like that they say that there's like a power there's a power in believing things in, in believing right kind of like the placebo effect like if you're familiar with the placebo effect you know it's they give you a pill I guess let's make an example they give you a pill it's it's a pill that has just sugar but since you believe in it so much that it's going to heal you it ends up healing you just because of your power of belief so but you know this is only temporary you know once you maybe you stop taking the pills or once you stop having that quartz uh, mineral then you start feeling down again so then now you have given your power over to these things now you depend on them and we need to learn how to have control of ourselves how to be responsible for ourselves we are pretty much given the responsibility to this rock we're given the responsibility to this santo to this bracelet we are the ones responsible so we need to take responsibility again for our actions right so we can forge the correct future that we want so yeah a lot of uh, women you know or just our traditions they're so they're so embedded they're so embedded in us that it can be hard to let go of them um, and if we're not awake enough our ego might start to fight back might start to feel threatened hurt that we're saying these things about the bracelet or they feel insulted they take the common personal like personal like um, they take it personal so you know it's kind of a tricky thing sometimes to bring it up just because it can cause that kind of disturbance in some people because again they're not aware enough they're still living like a kind of like a trance I guess in this in their mind um, and it's very it's tricky to be mindful a lot of people cannot do it they believe their thoughts too much you know so everything their mind says they kind of believe it and they think it's them and or just any belief systems that they have in their you know in their brains if you challenge them they feel threatened you know because it's part of their identity 
and identity is very important to us as, as human beings but more than more than that is important to the ego right the ego and there's nothing wrong with the ego as long as you know there, there's a healthy sense of ego but our, our society it's very much driven on ego a lot of it and not the healthy kind of ego it's like it's the one where we identify as where we identify or the lack of identification with the most high we have all these titles and we have all of these I'm this I'm that you know comp and all of that brings competition and competition does not create friends competition creates enemies you know so we have this sense of it's just a lot to break down really for society and the point of this podcast was pretty much to talk about Santeria so yes I you know Santeria is completely out of the question with you know my daughter with our lives and I just wanted to bring this message forward you know to spark maybe like a spark a thought or spark maybe to spark an awakening regarding this topic I'm pretty sure you know some people might just not really care but again I'm just here to try to spark or give you guys a different view of these you know these uh, traditions that we have in our culture and you know so yeah Thank you so much for tuning in to TCDG Radio. I hope you enjoyed this episode. What are your thoughts on Santeria? Let me know. Comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay in the loop. Remember to tune in to TCDG Radio Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also connect with me on social media to get more of me and my music. My social media and contact information are on the video's description. Again, thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in and for allowing me to share this time with you. Take care. Saludos.